Hi, in this class, we'll be discussing about how we'll approach the question Neural Control of Respiration for the exams. So as in any other answer, we'll start off with a small introduction or two or three points regarding the background. So we know that there are basically two, three types of uh, regulation of respiration. One is the neural regulation, chemical regulation and non-chemical influences. And then you can mention that there are two types of neural regulation, which is voluntary and involuntary. The voluntary regulation is mainly done by the cortex and the involuntary uh, consists of two, which is the medullary respiratory centers and the pontine respiratory centers. So in the introduction, you can uh, write these points in a very simple way. Next, moving on to the details of the neural control of respiration, we can start off with the voluntary control system. We know that the voluntary control is mainly by the cerebral cortex. So, and uh, it is the it sends impulses to the respiratory motor neurons via the corticospinal tract. So, from the cortex to the respiratory motor neurons, uh, they are activated by the corticospinal tracts. And the behavioral component of respiration is controlled by the voluntary control system. And the best example is that we can hold our breath because of this voluntary control system. So, breath holding is possible due to this voluntary control system. Then after that, we can move on to the involuntary or the automatic control system. Now, in involuntary automatic control system, basically we've got two groups of neurons, which are the medullary respiratory group and the pontine group. In medullary respiratory group, we have the pre bodzinger complex. It is these, this area here is called the pre bodzinger complex. And this is responsible for the pacemaker activity, which initiates the respiration. And then we have the dorsal respiratory group and the ventral respiratory group. These two, regarding these two groups, you have to write some more in detail. So, we will just see what to write. So, dorsal respiratory group is mainly the respiratory group of neurons which is involved in quiet, in quiet respiration. That is normal breathing. So, in normal breathing, the expiration is a passive process. Only inspiration is the active process. So, basically, the dorsal respiratory group of neurons is involved in quiet inspiration. So this is a diagram which is depicting the different areas. So where is the dorsal respiratory group here? Here we can see that this is the dorsal respiratory group of neurons. Okay. And here we can see that it receives impulses via the vagus and the glossopharyngeal. So what impulses are these vagus and glossopharyngeal carrying? They carry impulses from the peripheral baroreceptors, from the different stress receptors of the lung, all these impulses are carried through these vagus and glossopharyngeal to the dorsal respiratory group of neurons. And from here, via the respiratory motor pathways, they reach the inspiratory muscles. So that's how the dorsal, root of, root, uh, dorsal group of neurons function. So here, this is the dorsal respiratory group. And then, as I said, we have the vagus and the glossopharyngeal nerve. And it gives its efference to, through the respiratory motor pathways. Now, the important function of this dorsal respiratory group is that they, they can they produce the inspiratory ramp signals. So, what are these inspiratory ramp signals? Well, I said that there are inspiratory neurons in the dorsal respiratory group. They send an action potential to the inspiratory muscles. Now, this action potential begins weakly and steadily increases for two seconds and after that it ceases abruptly for the next three seconds so what happens it will turn off the excitation and so there will be elastic recoil of the lungs and the chest wall and thus there will be expression so here you can see that the action potential is produced only for inspiration the expiration is a passive process which occurs due to turn off of the excitation Okay, so this is a diagram showing these inspiratory ramp signals. So if you are just going to look it closely, this is the graph showing the lung volume and the inspiratory ramp signals. So initially, the inspiratory neurons will start firing for about two seconds. 
So at that time you can see here that the lung volume also increases and then it suddenly ceases. So what happens? The lung volume also decreases. So this part is the active to the inspiratory neurons and this occurs due to the passive recoil of the lungs. So these are called the ramp signals. Now the next medullary center is the ventral respiratory group and these are involved in deep and heavy respiration. So what's the difference? In deep or heavy respiration, both inspiration and expiration is active. So that is why ventral respiratory group contains both inspiratory and expiratory neurons. So this is a diagram showing the ventral respiratory group. We can just look closer here. This is the ventral respiratory group of neurons. And here we can see that these two send impulses to the respiratory muscles. But the difference is that the ventral respiratory group send their impulses more to the accessory muscles of respiration because those are needed for heavy respiration. So it is totally inactive during normal quiet respiration. Basically the signals, respiratory signals from the dorsal respiratory group spill over to the ventral respiratory group when there is need for increased ventilation. Okay, so that is how it is only during heavy respiration or when, that, when the body needs increased ventilation does the VRG neurons fire. And as I said before, it contributes to both inspiration and expiration. So that was about the medullary centers. Now moving on to the pontine centers. In the pons too, we've got two groups of neurons. This is the pneumotaxic center and the apneustic center. Okay, pneumotaxic center and apneustic center. They modulate and fine tune the op output from the medullary centers. So basically the signals are from the medullary centers. These are modulated or fine tuned by these pontine centers. So if you look closely, here you can see that this is the pons, this is the pneumotaxic center and this is the apneustic center. Now apneustic center actually stimulates the DRG and prolongs inspiration whereas pneumotaxic center inhibits the apneustic center. Okay, we'll see more about this in the coming slides. So as I said before, apneustic center increases the depth of respiration. It retards the switch off of the inspiratory signal and thus inspiration will be prolonged and deep. If you remember for that inspiratory ramp signals, initially the inspiration was going up and then suddenly there was a switch off signal which turns off the excitation. So apneustic center retards the switch off and thus inspiration will be prolonged. So apneusis means long uh, increased depth of respiration. This apneustic center is a pneumotaxic center. So what is the function of pneumotaxic center? These transmit the signals to the DRG and causes the switch off of the inspiratory signal. So thus it will shorten the inspiration and then expiration will follow. So the primary effect here is it will limit inspiration and thus when you limit inspiration what happens? Secondarily you can see that the rate of in, uh, respiration increases. Okay, So that is the important point here. It limits inspiration and thus increases the respiratory rate. Now moving on to the diagram that you have to draw for this question. So here this is the main diagram that you have to draw showing the pontine centers which are the pneumotaxic and the apneustic and then we have to draw the DRG and the VRG showing the vagal efference and also the efference from these group of neurons to the respiratory motor pathways. So when you actually draw it, it should be something like this wherein your, all your uh, areas should be marked well and you have to show the impulses via the vagus and the glossopharyngeal to these areas. Okay. Now for some additional scoring points, we can also write about the effect of transection at different levels because that experiment clearly showed the function of each of the areas. Then you can also write the clinical aspects of abnormal breathing like chain stokes breathing, Biot's breathing, Kussmaul's breathing. And then we can write about the hearing brewer reflexes and also about ondine's curse. What was this? This is a very interesting, curse, interesting term in which only voluntary control of respiration is possible and involuntary control is not possible. And thus the subject cannot sleep. Okay. 
So these are the addition scoring points. So depending upon the mark or the weightage, you can add these points.